Ladies and gentlemen, this is an article that came out in Rolling Stone. And just looking at the title of this article, we have been saying this forever in the Black community. We have always said this was one of the biggest problems in America. White supremacy, domestic terrorism. You know, we can go back and look after um, all the cases that have happened, all of the shootings, all of the mass shootings and manifestos were written and we read over and, and one thing that's ringing true in those manifestos, each one of those guys were white supremacists and gladly wrote down who they hated in this country. They had no problem doing it. So extremism is nothing new to America. And many of us have seen in our lifetime these shootings. So, and we've seen it in different forms, ladies and gentlemen. We have seen it in many, many different forms. And no, they do not have to have on any Ku Klux Klan robe or, you know, or hood on their head to be a white supremacist. We've seen it in many forms. We've seen it in the form of these phone calls made out here. We've seen it done on our children. We've seen it in police departments around this country. We have seen the threats online in the terrorism. We have seen it in many, many forms in America. So after so many shootings that happened in America, they are now facing the truth. So in the wake of the El Paso shooting and other white supremacist motivated attacks, the Department of Homeland Security has added white supremacy to its list of domestic terrorism threats marking the first time since the creation of the department post 9-11 that it has emphasized white nationalists domestic terrorism as a threat on par with that posed by foreign groups you know no it's not it's not foreign groups it's not al-qaeda doing this stuff on american soil or b-i-e you know, we, we don't have no history like that, despite the fact that they're trying to make this false equivalence that they can never technically make. You, you never seen that from anybody else more than we have seen domestic terrorism from white supremacists and these white nationalists. Okay, we saw it in Charlottesville too. And ladies and gentlemen, if you remember, it was Trump that shut down the investigations on white supremacist groups when he took office. And look at what has happened from that time all the way up until now. It's been one big mess. And a bunch of people in this country denying what it is. They will tell you, oh, these guys are all lone wolves. What, hundreds of lone wolves? <laughs> okay, thousands of home uh, lone wolves. Oh, it's mental illness. No, it's domestic terrorism. It's not mental illness. But these are the excuses that we keep getting. Oh, well, they had a tough life. They were teased in school. You know, we, we've heard it all. We've heard it all. And at the end of the day, it's still domestic terrorism. So, ladies and gentlemen, you know, remember we had Candace Owens? 
giving her testimony, saying that the biggest problem is not white supremacy, uh, white supremacy, but the biggest problem are fathers in the home, in the black community. Okay. And she tried to say it was all of these other things. Yes, the black community has problems. Yes, we do. But that is not the biggest problem in America. Okay, that's not the biggest problem in America. So, but she got a lot of nerve sitting her ass anywhere trying to speak on the behalf of the black community. And we already know, they said BIE is not the problem. And it's not. It's never been the problem. But they desperately want to give us some kind of equivalent label that just doesn't fit. It don't fit. So, ladies and gentlemen, the Department of Homeland Security released a 40-page document outlining how it will work with local and state governments to improve its data collection methods on white nationalist threats and try to raise awareness of and reduce the spread of misinformation across social networks, which have contributed to the fueling of extremist ideology. Yeah, because, you know, they recruit online, ladies and gentlemen. So we know in El Paso, 22 lives were taken. And, you know, it's just been so many shootings. They can't continue to look the other way and, and tell you it's all these other things. Oh, it's not domestic terrorism. It's just a shooting. Okay, you just sounding ridiculous. Okay, so it was 22 shootings, uh, 22 um, dead in El Paso, Texas. And, and trust me, there's more shootings. You know, I just have to go out on a website and see what that number is up to at this point. So, um, so the DHS new strategy on combating domestic terrorism and targeted violence from white supremacists as nearly as 4,000 DHS employees were based in El Paso. This was an attack on all of us, on our family, he told the Atlantic. The Department of Homeland Security policy shift comes as welcome news to extremism researchers who have sharply criticized the Trump administration for shutting down and defunding various DHS initiatives intended to curb the growing white nationalist domestic terrorism threat. Yeah, a lot of people were upset about Trump doing that, you know? And like I said, look at what we're looking at now out here. Civil rights groups have been screaming from the rafters about the federal government not taking white supremacy seriously. That's very true. That's very true. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen, when the black community were saying these things, we were pretty much ignored. You know, they have a tendency of willfully not taking things that we say seriously, you know, but see now when they go out here gunning people down, they are taking out a lot of their own people. So they're feeling the impacts of these mass shootings as well, you know, but look at how long it took them. This is 2019. This stuff has been going on for decades. And they're just getting around to admitting this is a problem now. You're finally getting here. Wow. Definitely slow. So El Paso, um, you know, I think 
that was really a big wake up call. Those three shootings about a month ago. That was definitely a wake up call because you remember it was the Garlic Festival, El Paso, and Dayton, Ohio. And those shootings were just back to back. You know, back to back shootings. So that was definitely a wake up moment for people that are willfully ignorant and choosing to look the other way. So, ladies and gentlemen, please tell me what you think. This should have been done a long time ago. And Trump should never have defunded any kind of efforts to curb this stuff that was going on in the country. But he did. And it definitely did not make things better. It actually made things worse. But please tell me what you think, ladies and gentlemen. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell. And I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.